it finally happened. One of the parts or actors that I was fan casting for in a video actually got cast. Like we have an announcement from a trade and then confirmed by James Gunn, the director of the movie, about who's playing Superman, who's playing Lois. So first of all, I just want to say very exciting. This is fun. This whole process to cover has been fun. I, I enjoyed this. I think Lex will be just as fun. And then in the next couple of days, I'm releasing my authority fan cast video and there's already one on Nebula and then the next one will be on Nebula, but those will also be fun to watch. It seems like we'll probably be getting some of those guys here. We'll touch on that later. First of all, everybody that sent me tweets during the process about, you know, who is thinking about getting cast and then different reports and stuff. I love being up to date on all that stuff. I 100% appreciate it. So let's break them both down. And you got two actors here and these were these were officially like James Gunn said these are the people in the movie and there was a little bit of apparently screen testing or some sort of chemistry testing going on this week, uh, like earlier in the week. So whatever that is, is resolved. I don't know too much about two of the people, one of the Superman and one of the Loises that didn't make it. So right off the bat, sorry for them. Uh, one of the Loises that didn't make it was Emma Mackey who I've been doing a little bit more research on because she did come up in this, and I was like, well, maybe she'll get it. So I looked into sex education a little bit. Yes, yeah, she's going to be in Barbie soon. She seems good. I would have liked her too. And then Nicholas Holt on the Superman side, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Like, And to be fair, he's a very successful, like he just did Renfield, and you know he was in like four X-Men movies, five if you count, the Deadpool 2 cameo, and probably Deadpool 3, I don't know. So you know Nicholas Holt is doing okay. The great has been going very well for him. But on the other hand... It's got to be rough, apparently going out for Batman and not getting it, and then going out for this and not getting it. That being said, I think there's a chance that he was not, like, I, I believe that he was there for Clark, but I also have a feeling James Gunn was, like, in the back of his head, like, let's see, let's see this guy, let's get a, let's get a look at him. Is he Lex material? Is he Manchester Black material? Is he Hal Jordan? Is he Bruce Wayne? Like, James Gunn is about to cast, like, a hundred characters and half of them are played by white guys. So Nicholas Holt has a lot of options here. I'm sure if James Gunn likes him and if Nicholas Holt wants to, he will show up in one of these eventually. I think he'd be a smart pick for Batman, honestly, especially if, you know, if he had Damien, because Nicholas Holt's currently 32, I believe. So if he had a, if 10 year old Damien is in the picture, that means he had sex with Talia when he was 21. That's believable, that's reasonable. So I actually think that could work and then he could be Batman for a very long time, which is kind of the that, that's the perfect, I would say, like win win because Pattinson clearly doesn't want to be Batman for a long time. But maybe if Nicholas Holt does want to, then this can be a role he takes on and does for like 20 years. I don't know. It's up to him. Uh, I do think he'd be a great Manchester Black. I'm like, I think he'd be a fine Luthor. I'm not in love with it. Like, I'm not like that is the perfect casting. It's just that when someone like James Gunn, when rumors come out that he is thinking of Nicholas Holt for Lex Luthor, that makes me go, ooh, I would not have thought of that. That is something. Like, even Jesse Eisenberg, I, obviously not a fan. I've talked about it a lot. I don't think that Lex Luthor worked, but it's a take. And like, when he get, got cast in that role, it did kind of make you go, hmm, I wonder what they're doing here. And part of it maybe is just like my disconnection with Zack Snyder like vision in general, I wasn't thrilled by it. But like if James Gunn, someone who I don't think has made a bad movie and has made some movies that I really, really love, probably one of my favorite movies of this year, does that and makes a weird casting choice. It's like, oh, hell yeah, I'm down. Let's let's see it. I do think the Batman thing makes sense. I think Manchester Black or another member of the Authority also makes sense. There's just there's a lot of spots. I'm sure we'll see Nicholas Holt in the future. Moving forward, you got our winners. So let's talk about Rachel Brazan first. I actually have more like screen time with like i've seen more of things she's been in mostly because i watched the first two seasons of marvelous miss Maisel. right off the bat she seems like, capable and good i have no really strong feelings about her i didn't mention her i went back and checked didn't mention her in my lowest video mostly because at that point i was casting a lois for a younger clark and i was casting a lois like under 30 i think it was a bar i had set or like that was what i was shooting for uh and she would have you know been outside of that range i don't have like I said, incredibly strong feelings about her. It feels like we're going to get kind of a Hudsucker proxy, like almost newsy kind of here's the scoop of the hot ticket stuff. And, you know, that's kind of what she does in Marvelous Miss Maisel. It's an Amy Sherman Palladino show where everyone's talking at the speed of light. Like that Lois could be that. I said this in the video. Lois is a very broad cast, right? Like it's not a character that's super specific. It's there's a lot of different directions you can go in it. You can 
Like, I, th- I think race-wise, it could have been anything. So I think the idea that Rachel Brosnahan gets this role, sure. And she's clearly very talented. She's on this Marvelous Miss Maisel show for quite some time. I believe she got nominated for some Golden Globes. And, you know, she's in stuff like House of Cards. And most importantly, she was on Quibi's most famous show, probably, uh, the Golden Arm thing that everybody saw on Instagram where she doesn't want to be buried without her golden arm. And you know what? That, that I'll, I'll say that. I respect that she'll do some absolute, like, schlock to work with Sam Raimi on that. But, like, just go, like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. That sounds fun. I, I'm, I, I appreciate that. And one of the things that James Gunn said is that he believes that both of these p- two people are good actors, they're good choices, and they're good people, like, good to work with. And that's the most important thing. Do they have chemistry? Are they going to work well together? You know, I was just listening to, for no good reason, Patton Oswalt talking about the Blade Trinity movie. And, like, nothing is worse for something, even if you have the perfect casting, not that that necessarily was, than just a set where everybody hates each other. And even on, like, even on a more, you know, less apocalyptic level where they just aren't vibing. Like, that, that is not good. So even if it's not exactly what I want from Lois, it still could be a good pick. Like I said, it's not not what I want. My my I could be swung uh, any which way. I'm excited for the performance. And I do, I like her in Marvelous Miss Maisel. I have a real hard time with that show because, and it took me a while to figure this out, I hate watching actors perform written stand-up comedy for an audience that's laugh. And I'm not laughing at it. It feels so awkward. I don't know why. I don't like I don't like watching people perform in performances. The same way, same reason I didn't love Coda. Um, I love Coda is good. It's a very good movie. But the bit where the 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 kid sings and it's I, it's something about it. I, f- I find it awkward, especially when you're watching other people watch them sing and you're supposed to feel the way they're feeling and you're not feeling that way because you're not quite as moved by it. It's just I don't know. It's a disconnect that I never liked. And as someone who loves stand up comedy, like a humongous fan, I watch constantly. You know, her her bits are fine. But they're not like everybody falling off their seat, you know, slapping their table like the Jimmy Fallon interview fine. And that's what it is on the show. And I'm always like, it just it feels weird. Listen, this is just a problem with me. It's a good it's a good show. And yeah, and she's 32. She could definitely do this role for a while, which is one of the things that I think is important. And James Gunn trusts her. So I trust her because I trust James Gunn. David Cornsweet for Superman. He was in my like top eight. Uh, he didn't make it to my top three, mostly because I thought he was not as quite as exciting and like as groundbreaking of a pick as I was kind of hoping for. That's not to say I don't think he's the right pick or anything like that. He seems quite capable. I said this during the thing. I'm like, he's got it. He's got it all. Uh, he just seems like Henry Cavill again. And yes, there's people online that are like, well, Henry Cavill, you know, who he seems like he seems like Clark Kent. Sure. But also the idea like. There, there's two different kinds of casting that work. There's three different kinds of casting, let's say. One just doesn't work, where it's, it's not good. One is like Benedict Cumberbatch, right? Where everybody knew he was going to play Doctor Strange. And we were like, yeah, you know, he'd probably be good for Doctor Strange. And, you know, it, a little bit of time went, and it even got kind of more and more steam, and after Sherlock and everything. And then, oh, he gets cast in Doctor Strange, and he's good in it. He's a, he's a fantastic Doctor Strange. And then you have Chris Pratt, Guardians. Where, like, you maybe have an idea in your head of what that character is going to be like. I would say you do even the same thing with Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. You kind of know what an Iron Man character is going to look like. And people had their fan cast for that. It was the guy from the Magi, from Mummy. I don't remember that actor's name. He was in Resident Evil 4, I believe. It was him because he had the beard. He, he did, like, the, I think he is the voice work for um, Dr. Fate. I think he's fine. And like Tom Cruise, was like, Tom Cruise is going to be Iron Man. And that was probably also have been fine. Those would have been fine. We know what that movie would have looked like, right? But then instead, they picked Robert Downey Jr. And we all went, ooh, what is this we got here? And not only was it great casting, but it was it also showed like this movie is not what you're expecting. Something about this part of this is going to. Like, kind of inspire something new. And I'd say Chris Pratt was kind of the same thing. Where, A, he wasn't super buff at the time. But also was like, oh, he's a funny kind of... He's known for playing Andy Dwyer, like a dopey guy. And then we got Star-Lord. One of the best characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it was just like, there's something fun about when a casting director 
or just a director or producer or whatever sees something in an actor and goes, that's that's what we want. Not everybody can see that, but we can see that. And now they're going to be the guy. I think David Cornsweet can be a great Superman. You know, I think he's very, he seems very nice. First of all, everybody that seems to know him says nice things about him. I, I buy it. Uh, he, he looks perfect. Uh, he's in the right age range. Like he's, he's and I'm, I bet he's got great chemistry with Rachel Brosnahan. So I'm not saying that I don't think this, this casting was good. It's just that I'm on board with this movie no matter what. But Nicholas Holt gets Luther. That's me getting a signal from James Gunn. Like this is not what you're expecting. Something, something different is going to happen here. And that's automatically a little bit more interesting for me. That being said, I think this movie is going to be great. I've heard rumors about a Luthor. Uh, both Skarsgårds, apparently, Bill and Alexander, which seem like they'd be going out for really different roles. And I think that could also be a situation where, like, one something and one something else. Because I could see, like, see Alexander playing a Luther, especially after Succession. And I could see Bill playing a Brainiac or, or someone else in that. I could see Bill playing the Doctor from The Authority. There's a lot of different options for uh, a lot of different actors right now. Like, if you told me... They were throwing Bradley Cooper into this, right? I could name 15 characters he could play, right? Like, it's all of the possible DC characters, at least with Marvel. Like, when you give me Henry Cavill in Marvel, it's like, okay, well, I can narrow this down to, like, the 20 characters he could possibly play. And they haven't cast yet, and he's in the right age range for. But with this, it's like, yeah, I don't know. He might be in the right age range for, like, Blue Beetle Ted Cord. We don't know. I don't know how old that character is. And I, I just think that's really, I think we're in a really interesting spot. So, in conclusion, James Gunn, good job. These these seem like good picks. They are not bad picks. David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan, congratulations. I'm looking forward to big things. I can't wait for a good Superman movie. Not that the other ones haven't been good, but an- another good Superman movie. Uh, it definitely seems like because I've seen I've, I've definitely seen what um, David has posted about Superman, and, and it seems like he gets it. He gets this hopeful Superman thing, and I'm excited for that. Now, honestly, like the authority is next. Luther and the authority are the ones that are really going to seal it. And like that's good. That, those get to be all kinds of weird casting. If it's the Scars Guard short, that's fine, too. But like you can do some we can do some freaky stuff with this, and that could be pretty fun. And I'm excited. I'm actually very excited. One thing I'm like, very excited about is that it does seem like my pitch for Man of Steel 2 slash Superman Legacy, whatever it ends up being. Um, but like that, that video that I put out right around when James Gunn did the announcement and all that, it seems like that's happening. Like not, I'm not saying like they stole it. I'm saying that does seem pretty close to what the movie we're getting is because me and James are on the same wavelength where Superman is around and Manchester Black or, you know, Jack Hawksmore, but some sort of anti-hero that's part of the elite or the authority shows up and is like, hey, you should start executing heroes or executing villains and maybe heroes eventually. And Superman's like, no, I don't want to do that. And Lex takes advantage of the situation. Even, I feel like there's rumors that Mr. Terrific is going to be in there, which maybe he's the character that Superman inspires to be a hero late in the game or something like they have that connection. In my version with Steel, so like similar DC inventor type characters uh, could be in kind of the same role. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not saying that they like took this idea for me. It's not that groundbreaking of an idea. But I am like, even though some of this casting, I didn't get 100% right. I think I kind of nailed what the Superman movie is going to be. I'm very excited for that. This video will still be up in five months when that turns out all to be wrong. But that's how the YouTube works, baby. You got to roll with it. So hopefully between now and the end of time, we'll have some sort of fantastic forecasting. I would say if you enjoyed my Superman casting, if you enjoyed hearing about this stuff, you know, subscribe to this, the Nando Cut. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is where I do the new ones. I have my authority ones. Two videos on all the members of the authority that I think we will see, including one that isn't technically an authority member, considering what team they're going for, but kind of is. Now, all those are great. I'm very excited for people to see them get an opinion of what people think of that. That's all I got. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.